Kathy Wood says, if Gary Gensler doesn't approve the spot ETFs, there's something else at play. BlackRock calls out USDT and USDC as risks to Bitcoin. $600 million in open interest gets wiped out and US inflation falls to 3.2%. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crypto Daily. Uh, got a couple quick topics we're going to run through. I'm a little short on time, so um, we're just going to run through the uh, the you know big big headlines that are coming through today. Obviously, Bitcoin is down a lot, uh, down about a thousand dollars from thirty six five to thirty five five uh, or two and a half percent on the day. Um, you know, this coming despite kind of a hot CPI report and also um, you know the the general traditional markets doing pretty well. S and P's up two percent. So. Um, we don't really know for why the decline is, but uh, a couple a couple news items might might indicate that uh, towards the end here. Uh, the first major thing was Kathy Wood on CNBC today uh, on Squawk Box uh, talking about Gary Gensler. She also talked about uh, BlackRock and just the Bitcoin ETF uh, situation in general. Um, so you know, kind of the big headline was there has to be something else, and what she and uh, they you know on the show meant about that. Um, was essentially that, you know, there's no reason for, you know, Gary Gensler and the SEC to be holding back these ETFs uh, in terms of anything fundamental. You know, they like to cite that they're worried about, you know, retail investors, they're worried about risks uh, with Bitcoin being manipulated is kind of the big narrative that they're using. Um, but, you know, as it as the more you dive into it, the more you know that Gary Gensler taught courses about Bitcoin, you know, it's pretty clear that the SEC has done their research about Bitcoin. Um, you know, the fact that you, they're calling it a manipulated asset, um, you know, that that line of thinking would have worked, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when Bitcoin was a lot smaller. But as a trillion dollar market uh, cap asset now, I don't think that that line of thinking really uh, applies anymore. And we're kind of seeing that narrative fall apart. Uh, and the reasons for holding back the spot ETF are, are kind of crumbling. Um, so like they said, you know, there has to be something else. If these ETFs don't get approved, I think we're going to start to see a Pretty big uproar from the TradFi sector uh, about this, especially because now you've got BlackRock kind of in the mix. Uh, so speaking of BlackRock, they came out today and said that USDT and USDC stable coins pose risks to Bitcoin. So if you don't know, that's US dollar tether and USDC, uh, USD coin uh, issued by Circle. So, you know, Circle is actually a company uh, uh, owned by BlackRock or they own a large percentage of it uh, through other holdings. So kind of interesting. Uh, Will Clemente on uh, X said BlackRock funding their own investment circle, uh, you know, circles the issuer of USDC in before they launch their own stable coin. It's only business. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. Will they eat their own lunch in the case of, you know, launching their own stable coin that kind of eats market share from USDC and then obviously USDT um, and, you know, JP Morgan already launched their own JPM coin. I think it's a matter of time before all the major banks kind of launch their own coins in some uh, form or fashion. I think it's natural that they're going to do stable coins. JP Morgan actually is doing a pretty interesting thing uh, with, you know, their stable coin and their their blockchain protocols, which is to reduce the fees uh, and and essentially have, you know, more seamless and quick settlement for transactions. So it's kind of like this proxy use case of blockchain where it's not, you know, fully decentralized. They're not allowing their, you know, investors to hold Bitcoin or, or crypto, but they are using kind of crypto payment rails in order to kind of piggyback on them and reduce uh, fees and latency uh, for for payments, especially when they're uh, international payments. So kind of interesting to see uh, if BlackRock were to come out and come out with their own stable coin uh, or something kind of like it. Um, so like I said, Bitcoin's down a lot today. $600 million in open interest on the Bitcoin futures market was wiped out. So obviously a pretty big liquidation event. Uh, you know, like I said, we're down about two and a half percent. So nothing too, too crazy. You know, crypto has seen far worse in terms of uh, liquidation events. But uh, we're seeing this big seesaw happen right now where a lot of people are, you know, putting on longs and then, you know, markets going up pretty well. Uh, shorts are getting liquidated and then the reverse happens. You know, we see a little dip like this. A bunch of longs get liquidated. Uh, just a bunch of whipsaw in the market right now, I think, as people kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, and there's a lot of excitement that's really pent up. Uh, for this ETF to launch, uh, which obviously hasn't happened yet, but people think is going to happen soon. U.S. inflation, uh, the big news today, uh, the inflation uh, fell to 3.2%, which was lower than what analysts expected. Uh, not by much, just slightly lower. Uh, but in general, this is a good sign. I already saw some funny memes about how 
uh, you know, we're all going to make it. And, you know, the Fed is going to uh, reverse course on hiking rates and, and now everything's going to go up. Uh, so it should be kind of interesting to see. Uh, hard to really predict what's going to happen, uh, obviously. But, um, you know, I don't really see the Fed raising rates anytime soon. But I also don't really see them dropping rates anytime soon. I think a rate drop will probably happen sometime early next year. Uh, but we'll have to see uh, how that goes. We're only a few months away at this point. So 2023 is almost coming to an end. Uh, this is also when Bitcoin tends to really heat up. So at the end of the year, um, for whatever reason, that's just kind of how the last few cycles have played out. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Perhaps we are seeing, you know, the end of the crypto winter and the beginning of a massive bull market uh, kind of led by this ETF narrative. We'll have to see what happens, but I know we're all kind of following it closely. Uh, that's all I got for today. Like I said, quick episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow for November 15th. See ya.